Good afternoon, guys. Uh, pleasure to be here again with uh, Lipika soon. Uh, now, I have this huge challenge of introducing Lipika, so I will try and do justice to that. Uh, the official part, as you know, is top five interior designers, top 50 influential citizens in Delhi, uh, co-founded Lipika Sood Interiors, proprietor uh, Art and Aura, uh, president Designers Guild. That's the boring part. Uh, now, the really interesting part is, you know, I've had some spoken with her for five, six times uh, in the last, uh, in this year, and she's incredibly positive. It's fabulous talking with her. Uh, she talks from the heart. She says it as she feels, and that's what makes her an amazing person to work with. Uh, she finds beauty everywhere, and I'm not surprised that, uh, you know, when I look at everything that people say about her, uh, what stuck to me was the diva of decor, because that's really what she was. And uh, so thank you, Lipika, for joining us. I am looking forward to talking to you. Thank you so much, Alo, for that lovely introduction. And I'm completely overwhelmed by the fact that, you know, I get to speak to a huge number of people and I can already see that uh, there are uh, many, many people on this, uh, uh, you know, program today. And uh, the good part is, and I'm thanking you and Madhur, Daga, and uh, your entire team from the bottom of my heart that you, I get this opportunity to talk about a subject which is not really a subject which not too many designers and architects and people in the creative field really uh, talk too much about or discuss. Or maybe they don't sometimes even feel that it's important. But you know, in my journey, I thought, uh, you know, of so many years that this is one subject that really needs to be taken up. So yes, I'm glad I'm here. And I'm glad I'm really looking forward to this chat with you, Alok. Lovely, thank you. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's that effusive warmth you will feel that every time you talk with her. And I eternally remain look for, looking forward to talk to Lipika. So you will see that in the course of the next one hour. And it's, it's amazing, you know. Uh, so uh, let's start. You know, she started uh, her interior design firm in 1989. This is the time when I first, I, I just got into my first year engineering. So it's like, uh, she's like way more senior than I am. Uh, and... Uh, and, uh, you know, what's, what's really cool is she has worked in Lintas before, so she understands marketing or she understands a thing or two about marketing. I will never give advertising agency much credit. Uh, she also understands uh, uh, she, business, so she's been in Taj Hotels for as long as five years. And then she moved. So, uh, you know, when you moved into this design industry, and uh, I, I remember reading about how you were designing a nightclub at the Taj uh, and, and you decided that, yeah, this is what it is. So uh, how did you find this uh, industry? Uh, did you, did you uh, were you overwhelmed by it initially? How did you cope with it? How did you find your bearings? See, very honestly, I'll be very honest with you, Alok. All these things that happened in my life, the Lintas that you're talking about and the Taj, much that I enjoyed those jobs, they just happened to me by default. You know, it was not something I was chasing. It was not something I desired or designed to do, but I thoroughly enjoyed those jobs. But having said that, that was definitely not I what I was passionate about or something that I wanted to take up as a full-time career. Now, the very interesting part of all of this is, and this is something I want to share with a lot of young, not so young people uh, that probably will resonate with me, is that, you know, sometimes it's the marks that you get in your school or college. It is sometimes the environment, the society, what they are expecting out of you, determines what you have to do as, and take up as a career. Very little is really left to you to be able to choose what you want to do. And that's exactly what happened. The worst thing that happened in my life was I got good marks in the 12th. And because I was a commerce student, and interestingly, I'll tell you how I got these good marks. I was never a good student in terms of marks. I was good with extracurricular activities in my school. I was good with art, theater, all the creative stuff. And that's what you are, you know. You, you, you basically have your own identity if you really look into the past. And that's what I used to be doing. My school teacher called me one day and said, listen, if you are not getting good marks, you're going to spoil the position of your school in the 12th board. So decide to go on to arts and forget about commerce. Seven days, Alok, I howled and I cried and I cried and I said, oh my God, 
what are you know what is my what are my parents going to say what's everybody going to say with all the you know accolades that i got for the school for theater drama art my painting was made into a stamp when i was in school one uh, it was released none by none other than the then prime minister indira gandhi and here i was being told to uh, you know change my subject i decided i'm going to give it my 100% three months i worked i studied 14 18 hours a day and lo and behold i got good marks i went to sir i said sir what is a good marks with what does it qualify he says acche number to bahut mushkil se srcc is one college shriram college of commerce but that i'm sure you will not manage however of course there are lots of girls colleges sr lsr is there in kamla nehru jmc and all of that i took it upon me to say mirji to srcc hi jana hai and sure enough it's a long story i managed to get into college but true to myself and the way i was college was all about uh, doing crossroads which was our college festival being part of akriti which was the school magazine being part of the drama group being part of arts competitions so you know what i'm trying to tell you guys is that you know you get naturally guided towards what you're good at never mind what you're studying because that is only because of the way the our entire education system is left to me i would have never done it but when college finished everybody went for mass mba or law what did lipika sud do took up law delhi university llb so hello guys you are actually talking to a lawyer i never practiced law after 3 years of back breaking study i was into extra curriculars school and college was all about just going into getting you know attendances and all of that and true to of course i went into uh, studying mass communication from the indian institute of mass communication which is supposed to be a very premier institute that is something i loved because it has a lot of creativity advertising had a lot of creativity and campus interviews happened the lintas happened further from lintas i went on to join the taj group of hotels i just loved it i just loved the whole atmosphere of the taj the tata as a company today i look i can tell you today what i am is thanks to the groundwork or the the tata culture that i had i have understood and imbibed in the very start of my career it is not about just selling a product or a service the tatas believe in selling an emotion a connection it's all about being a part of a family and do you know that i left the taj group of hotels in 1989 and i'm still very much in touch with a whole lot of them a whole lot of them who i look up to i admire people i have learned from and that's the beauty of being having to have a good foundation in whatever you are doing of course having said that having had a great career there when i went to the taj for a training in the projects department and i saw how beautifully a night club was being designed it was called the my kind of place at taj palace at sadar patel mahal oh, yes, delhi of course i'm familiar with that remember? okay so my kind of place was the most happening night club at that point of time and i was so excited i was part of that whole story of being able to do it along with the projects team of course i was one little touch there being told to do all the uh, you know <laughs> running around work and you know how trainee trainees and juniors uh, juniors are but i took to it took it to my heart that this is it and i'm going to make a career out of it no matter what so every night and again i can tell you a lot of people will resonate with this every night there are people like me who would go to bed sleep to sleep thinking when will i ever get the chance to pursue what i love to do my creative side not that i was not enjoying the other side of my work my profile it was about meeting a lot of people i'm basically an extrovert but deep down that desire to do something that desire to be able to flower in the space i wanted to was not happening so the best thing i did was one day just picked up my bag and walked out and i said that's it i've had enough i am now going to take it up as a challenge after that was of course history there was no going back and i know you're going to ask me this question what happened next would you want to ask me yes absolutely i mean i believe when i joined the tile industry uh, okay. the nomenclature was so incredibly complex somebody will call it uh, 12 by 12 somebody will call it 300 by 300 somebody will call it ek foot by ek foot now it is why don't they have one standard nomenclature 
but okay so what was your experience yeah i can i can completely relate to the bara by bara my experience was learning on the job my gurus became the carpenters and all the uh, workers at the site so i learned even nomenclatures like suit ek suit do suit das suit bara suit i talked suit and let me tell you those were the real gurus who i learned from and i learned it how that passion you know alok i think that hunger has to be there to learn and that goes cross border for every industry it doesn't matter which industry you are you are in whether it's hospitality whether it's in the manufacturing whether it's in any kind of a trading if you have the hunger to learn if you have the hunger to grow if you have the hunger to make a mark out of anything that you do it does not matter what the situation is it does not matter what the environment is you are going to do it it doesn't matter if tsunami hits you one day or covid happens or another world war is around the corner you will still survive and i survived i survived because of that one small thing which was a passion completely powered by hunger and that's what completely changed the trajectory of my life trust me and i have not a day that i am regretting it and i am only growing and learning every single day of my life even a dialogue with you alok i know by the end of this dialogue i would have learned so much from you and some of the other people who are probably part of this chat and would be sharing some things with us oh awesome that's the kind of spirit that would keep you growing and how did you win your first project oh that's a great story so you know when i was studying economics in srcc i remember there was this formula of the 3 f's you know when you start a business you have the family friends and fools you have to go to them right. you know to all the philip kotler and everything that we learned so i decided see there's no space for ego in in, in any business let me tell you this unfortunately lot of creative people have come across have larger than life egos big egos sorry with all due respect guys there is no space for any ego in any industry in any form and if you have it then be things like corona virus will come and anyway give you a tight slap on your ego and tell you and teach you where to be so i decided to give my ego a rest and go whole hog with all the contacts i had developed in the taj because i was looking at the corporate segment i was looking at companies i was doing programs i was actually handling large conferences i was manager conferences and uh, i just went to them and i said listen i have opened a private limited company i'm doing everything very professionally i have a uh, civil engineer on board i have an architect on board and it's a private limited company and we are very capable of doing a certain size of project because the guys i have collaborated with are people who've been in this industry for x number of years and together we can give you the best and trust me that honesty that integrity that connection that i'd had and built in the past over the last 5 years that i'd worked with these companies completely let them allow me to do their work so you know i'll tell you ericsson happened ericsson came into india because of all the gap in the wto and everything business opened out opened up for multinational companies i'm talking about the early 90s and ericsson came into india and no and behold i was doing a complete building for ericsson telephone corporation it was not easy for me it was a huge challenge there was a lot of learning to do but one thing i learned and i learned very early in life and thanks to all the education of commerce economics and all the law and everything that i learned and the mass communication that collaboration is a very important element of being able to be successful and if you collaborate with the right set of people if you collaborate with the people who have adequate knowledge of a particular subject there's no way that you can fail so the 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 fun the 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 success mantra here was the collaboration that i went in for and it was a win win situation and once projects like uh, at my early life like ericsson like kirloskar brothers like hyundai motors i did all their um, uh, you know 30 77 stores all over the, uh, india and their uh, head office and all of that there was no looking back there was no looking back so if there was a big corporate house that was setting up uh, their base here in india it was a multinational or an indian company you see a lot of indian companies because the mncs had started coming in they also started pulling up their socks 
they had to also give good environments to their employees because they were otherwise leaving and leaving going off to these companies. So it was a great, great, um, you know, era of doing amazing work uh, and being appreciated for the work that we were doing, coming up with great ideas. My creative juices were flowing. We had designers on board. I had this thing about taking on people Alok, who was smarter than me. I know people were wondering, how is this possible? I mean, how? Why would you want to take people who are smarter than me? But I'll tell you something. It's very important to take people who are smarter than you because that's where you learn the fastest. And that's the way you will grow the fastest. And this is where I would tell Madhur Daga of Orient Bell that if he has taken somebody like Alok Agarwal, he's probably done the same thing. <laughs> I hope he's listening and I can negotiate a better salary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I know what you're saying, you know, uh, it's the difference between, okay, uh, not to name the others, but Obama pretty much had the same philosophy of hiring people better than him. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. wow. <laughs> but, and it would be very unfair for me to name anybody else. But uh, so you had all these projects happening and, you know, uh, uh, Ericsson and uh, there is this corporate house, this hotel, this stores. How do you build positioning? Because the projects are coming randomly and you're not controlling them. Uh, how do you, you know, build your own positioning? Okay. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is a very, very beautiful question that you asked me, Alok. I'll tell you why. It's not just about me here. It's something that I want to talk about, which would probably resonate or people in the design world should understand. Positioning or finding your niche is actually the key to be able to succeed. Because if you have an offering where you say, I offer everything on the table. As a designer, I can do this and I can do an office, I can do a house. Of course you can do it. But what is your niche? The whole world, the successful people, if you really look at their profiles, they are all about being specialists and not generalists. So by default, and the way we, we grew as a company, we ended up becoming a niche, get creating a niche for ourselves in the corporate world. And I realized positioning me as an expert to do projects in the corporate world was so much easier because it came that much faster. Because it was a word of mouth. It was one project where we learned from our faults, our mistakes, so that we did not repeat those mistakes when we did the next project, which was another corporate house. And it just went on and on like that. So I think even though, let me share this with you. I loved, I would have loved to do a hotel for the first 10 years of my life. Nobody gave it to me. Nobody trusted me. It took me so much of effort to finally convince a client who was, based out for a hotel project that was coming up in Ludhiana and the client was based out of London. And I went, went backwards, went out of my way, creating the, you know, uh, model uh, rooms and all the prototypes that were required to be done just to make him feel sure and confident that yes, we can do it. And of course there was Sarovar Park Plaza who were the, uh, the other, uh, the operators and, you know, it took a lot of convincing with those guys, but they also came around and you know what they told me, they said, listen, we, we understand that you've not done it, but we can sense the, the energy, the, you know, the, 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 the integrity that with, with which you would like to work on this project. So you're on. So the first five-star hotel in Ludhiana at Bhai Bhala Chok, which was the Park Plaza Hotel, happened. And that to me was one of the real great uh, moments of my time where I got to learn so much. I got to grow so much as in another, uh, as a designer. And of course, it created another vertical in my life and in my organization. Of course, parallelly, we also kept on doing, uh, I do a lot of high-end um, residences. Uh, I normally don't discuss them because I uh, sign non-disclosure agreements with my clients. I don't project those in my websites or any other, um, you know, material for public, which is for public consumption. But yes, I also simultaneously uh, love doing those kind of projects, which are niche, uh, HNIs, or very, very uh, exclusive, uh, high on design content uh, kind of projects. So yes, so it's been a mixed bag, but when it comes to positioning, my little uh, advice, or, or if I can share this uh, with my uh, friends in the design fraternities, 
narrow down and start looking at a niche, narrow down, become a specialist, narrow down, get out of this generalist uh, uh, thing. You will automatically, people think, oh my God, if I narrow down and start refusing projects, how will I survive? Friends, you will survive. I'm telling you, Alok, it is just a mindset. The moment you start narrowing down, automatically you start inviting projects and you know customers and clients of that particular nature. And let me tell you this adequate in any field that you choose. After all, in one lifetime, how much can you do? You can't do all the projects in the entire world, right? So I think you will then easily move from the space of you know, scarcity to the place of space of abundance. Simply by narrowing down. Yeah, no, I, I, I like what you have done and correct me if I'm wrong. So, you know, I'm trying to distill out of it. Uh, what you're talking about is obviously because of your unique path, be it Lintas or Taj or the fact that you got corporates. One default positioning was uh, dependent on the kind of projects you did. Uh, then the other positioning happened because you chose to be authentic or true to yourself and you wanted to do hotels. Uh, then obviously you have a natural passion for uh, design and that's why uh, design content, HNIs and so on. So it's, it's a mix of something that's happening by chance, something that you're passionate about and uh, also being true to your own self. So that's how you decide your positioning. So it may not be done on a piece of paper, but it just evolves over time. Uh, yes and no. Let me tell you something. And uh, it's also very important for a lot of the designers uh, here to uh, understand is that uh, things don't happen uh, by, uh, by default mode. If you really want to succeed, it's okay. Maybe you get a very good client at one point of time. It's a stroke of luck. But at the end of the day, like any product manufacturer has to work on a marketing uh, you know, principles have to apply principles of marketing to their business. It's the same thing that applies to us, the service industry, which most of the designers, architects, creative preneurs do not understand. And I don't blame them. It's because, you know, most of the creative people, it's, it's, it's a right brain, left brain thing. Is their right brain, which is so prominent that their analytical brain, which is the left brain, just doesn't allow them to think uh, in, in a, a way that would bring business on the table as an entrepreneur. So it's what is really lacking is the entrepreneurial skills, because once they get those entrepreneurial skills, their creativity would get a better and a bigger platform because then they will consciously be working on positioning, on things like branding, on things like marketing, on things which are on communication, which are absolutely critical for even a service industry like designers and architects. It is not only for product manufacturers. It's a myth to say that only people like Orient Bell should be doing marketing and looking at their market size, working on their branding, working on their communication. All of those principles apply to even a, a, service, a person in the service industry. It's just that they're closed about it. The moment they open up and say, yes, it is important, and they start applying those principles, wonders are going to happen. Awesome. You know, I'm, uh, Lipika, it's very unlikely I will get another ad agency guy who's also an architect and an interior designer. Uh, it's <laughs> very unlikely. So uh, what prompted you uh, to really go after the hotel project in Ludhiana? And I'm very interested in that positioning aspect of you, uh, because obviously you were thinking about it consciously. So, you know, why were you so keen about it? See, I'll tell you, Alok, if we all travel and we love living, staying in five-star hotels, there's this comfort of being in a luxurious, uh, everybody loves luxury. And it's a myth to say, no, no, I don't enjoy it. Everybody, most people, unless you're a sadhu. Add to it my experience of the Taj. Sure. 
Sure. This new Taj group of sure. hotels helped me go through various departments. I remember spending almost a month in F and B in the kitchen. I remember only uh, looking. At, I, I mean, doing housekeeping and just spending a month just looking at how these housekeeping people worked and actually hands on do all the bed uh, beds and the uh, you, you know cleaning of the uh, even the pots. Let me tell you that was part of the the the, the training that was given to us. And let me tell you, I am so. Glad I did it, and that made me understand the whole mechanics of how a five-star hotel works, from how important the engineering office is, uh, how important the back of the office is, as much as the front office of a hotel industry. Without uh, them working in tandem and in close relation with each other, it cannot succeed. And that is what was the hunger for me to be wanting to do a hotel. And of course, the learning, you know, as I said, Alok, if now I, I get another project which I've never done in my life, like a hospital once happened in my life and the first educational institution, Sharda University happened to me in my life. Every, every project was a learning experience. What I love it more than I do. What have you not done as yet? <laughs> you know, for a very long time, I'll share the secret with you. You know, all, all of us go to a beauty parlor, right? I used to wonder why nobody is giving me an opportunity to design a beauty parlor. And much to my surprise, many, many years later, after being in the career for almost 20 years, this lady who, uh, you know, approached me and said, I want to do this completely boutique uh, beauty parlor. It's only for children from the age group of 5 to 15. I want to call it cuts and candy. And I want to do it completely out of the box. I don't want to share my concept with anybody. You have to promise me that you will not share my concepts with anybody because this is going to be a one of a kind. And there I was. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. And I, for me, it was not just learning and doing a, 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 a parlor. It was also a culture shock, Alok. Can you imagine five-year-olds coming into a parlor and say, sitting on a couch and saying, give me that cut and coming up with a picture of somebody with these spikes. And I remember Salman Khan, there was some movie at that point of time where he used to shove his uh, dark glasses behind him. And these little kids, these boys would come with these spiky hairs with those attitudes. And I'm like, who are these kids? <laughs> what are their parents all about? You know, for me, I came from a different background altogether. So, I mean, I learned. So, as I said, every project teaches you. <laughs> and it was all learning again and it was a lot of fun. So, yes, Parla finally happened. <laughs> great. So, uh, and, uh, I will see if we have any more Parla projects. I'm thinking of a couple of CEOs I know and I will at least get them to talk to you. Uh, how do you today build a pipeline of projects? How do you maintain the pipeline? Super question again. Pipeline, my dear friends, and that's for not just you, my dear friend Alok, and for all those who are listening, is actually the key to be able to succeed long term. That's it. You know, there is a 30-day rule. I don't know how many of you know about a 30-day rule. I'm sure you would probably know, but I don't know. I can share it with you. Go ahead. The 30-day rule clearly tells you that if you work for 30 days in a month, every day, one little part of the day to build a pipeline, it will help you for the next three months to keep you going. But if you don't continue that 30-day rule, after the three months, you've dried up and you're finished and you're over. So the 30-day rule, either you do one hour of marketing, creating a pipeline every day, day on day, or you decide that out of the six weeks, a days of a week or a five day week that I work one day of the week, I am going to shut myself from all other activities of the business. And I am going to only do my pipeline work, which means customer dealing, talking to future customers, identifying your customer avatar, identifying how and what your communication will be, identifying the way you would like to communicate to your clients with your current projects, with your past projects, looking and sourcing for your future projects, identifying what medium to choose. 
a lot of people i see a lot of designers today randomly posting in facebook randomly posting uh, at instagram sometimes about them and their dog sometimes about them and their wedding anniversary and then suddenly about their one project comes up and pops up everything has to be planned these are tools of marketing these are not unless of course you don't want to market and you say i have enough business and i don't care for me this is just fun time and i want to use instagram to just have some uh, break up uh, you know break out time but these are powerful tools these are now times especially in a covid situation especially in the new normal we are all shut down but even in this shutdown situation alo you will find distinctly those who are going whole hog in their careers they are actually working harder longer hours they are actually looking at how to mod mod you know uh, uh, adjust and mod uh, change their whole uh, business policies and their strategies and there are those who are waiting for the the the, the bacteria the the antidote to come out they are just waiting and they are so busy answering to all the whatsapp messages that are coming about something that has happened in china and another thing that has happened with somewhere else that by now in 3 months i think they would have done their phd in uh, corona virus and i think all institutes educational institutes should now have an honorary degree on this a lot of people will qualify <laughs> no i like the suggestion which is that pretty much squirrel away uh and build your pipeline gradually because you don't know which is going to come through and which is not going to come through and uh, keep squirreling it away daily basis or a weekly basis and uh, yeah that's for you let me tell you hello very creative people highly creative people i know who are genuinely having loads of knowledge very high on creativity lose out simply because of their one drawback is that they don't even address the fact that they have to have a marketing skill and if they don't have it they don't even want to acquire it they are just waiting for some natural uh, such uh, something to hit them and some uh, stroke of luck to happen for them to get their next project it doesn't happen we have to be prepared at all times i'm not saying it doesn't lot of lot of very big projects are sometimes just fall in your lap but is that the way to succeed for waiting for uh, a lady luck to happen not at all let me share here like if you allow me to share uh, the screen with you uh, alok can i do a small little uh, task with uh, with my friends who are watching absolutely okay great okay. and uh, you have a slide handy okay great just give me it was a, just a two minute task but i think it will be a lot of fun to just do it and put my let's point across okay yes let's do it just to say let me just see if i can open my screen on this one uh the host has disabled attendee screen sharing so if you can allow my screen sh uh, screen sharing uh, i would be able to share it uh, alo yep uh i'm sure that will be allowed and let's uh, it is uh, done yeah oh great now i've got it <laughs> okay super just give me half a minute now that i have got share Screen share facility, super. Okay, so, 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 so this is a matrix. Okay, simple matrix. If if some of you have a paper and pen, you can even draw it out. So one side is a creativity, right? And the other side is marketing skills. Okay. Right. Now, a most creative people don't even think marketing is a worth it. i mean what marketing why should we market we are in the service industry we are providers of a design what marketing we are not selling a product no look what happens when you are low on creativity and when you are low on marketing skills you are a struggler in any case so if you if you have that illusion that you are creative and you are actually in this you know in this quadrant and you are struggling because you are either low on creativity and you are low on your marketing skills then you are a struggler serious suggestion is look for an option there is nothing wrong it's always good to look for an option face realities move on but if you are high on creativity which most people have come across alok i have found people in these boutique uh, you know design uh, companies even in very large companies hugely creative 
all they are doing is firefighting all day long 90% of their time goes firefighting 10% is creativity that also goes down the tube because they don't know how to handle it because they are low on their marketing skills they haven't applied certain principles that would help them to go to the next level then there are a lot of people you come across in this world who are very good with marketing extremely good marketing okay they probably learned it or they have got the knack for it they worked in another organization but have no creativity they just find a gap in the market and they go whole hog with their marketing skills make a big buck but they are short term successes they cannot survive because the market will understand that he is not genuine with his creativity he is not talented and he is just there to make a big buck and therefore he has a natural death yeah what one needs to reach is this you need to move from a survivor to a star from a person who is surviving in his business who is good with creativity and low in marketing to becoming a star who is good with creativity and good with the marketing skills the moment you realize that you have to reach here and for that you have to work on this core side of the matrix you cannot lose out you are a winner all the way let me tell you this and that is where this whole subject of talking about being uh, from moving from being a survivor to be moving to become having a thriving design practice is uh, what i am trying to emphasize on today because a lot of people a lot of people do not understand that it is the marketing skills is what is not being applied that is basically what is not allowing the designer to flourish his creativity is the biggest secret of the world let me tell you he is the biggest secret he is he is the most creative person but in his own little world and till you apply a few simple tenets of marketing and this is not what i'm saying which business schools teach you don't have to join an mba degree and maybe become an iim graduate or uh, these are simple marketing tools learn from people who have traveled that path follow people who have been there done it learn from other people's mistakes i love to learn from my own mistakes in fact whenever i am uh, you know addressing students or other designers i start with telling them where i went wrong i look the biggest uh, you know lessons are learned when you are down and under when you have fallen when you have done all your mistakes and trust me i have done them several times but the fact of the matter is today why i'm talking to you and sharing this with you is not about being it's about falling it's about getting up and each time brushing myself and moving ahead and every time moving faster and better and keeping all those things i didn't do right in my mind and sharing it with my other peer group so that they don't make those mistakes you know it is said that you start with on the shoulders of a giant that's where i want them to say you don't have to start from the bottom learn from other people's mistake take notes move on from there move faster and get successful and it's possible i really respect that humility and uh, it's inspiring uh, thank so you. thank you so much for sharing that thank and uh, how, how how do you balance this time between uh, marketing and uh, let's say doing the work because uh, yes if i'm spending an hour every day or if i'm spending one day in a week i'm sure there are clients who are tough or demanding most of them are and uh, you know how do you balance the two times uh, do you do it consciously does it happen by chance or See, how I'll do you i'll tell you something sure alok the... yeah i agree with you there, it has to be done consciously a lot of people i'll tell you and most creative people are actually introverts and sometimes they don't enjoy the marketing part and they forget marketing they hate and i can tell you with myself the accounts the finances very weak again as i said it's all about the right brain and the left brain it just doesn't come naturally but having said that it is one has to understand that it is important to work on it so you have to acquire those skills you have to create 
the likingness or hire people to help you to do that, but it has to be done. Whether you do it yourself, whether you hire people or collaborate with people to do it, but it needs to be done and it has to be done parallelly. Frankly, left to me, I would be sketching and designing all through the night, blurry eyes, feeling tired. Next morning, people would look at me and think, oh my God, you've not slept. Is it stress? Nowadays, people would say, is it the tension of coronavirus? What is it? And I'm like, no, I have been so excited all night long. I've been sketching and thinking, how better can I do something? And that's where the, 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 the magic is. And that is only possible when there is a certain level of passion that you have to work with. Most people are even going through an entire life not even knowing what their, what their passion is. They have their passion. And one thing, let me, can I share this with you, you Alok? Go ahead. Go ahead. People have, everybody has a hobby. I'm sure even you would have a hobby. People are so scared to uh, experiment with what they love. I know of people, I have had a designer in my own office. Every time I watched her taking a break, she would be surfing the net on how to make cakes, how to make pastries. One day I called her and I said, listen, please come. I sat her down and I said, what is this? You're constantly looking at all of this. She says, I am passionate about it all. I go home and that's all I, what I do. Whatever I little I learn, I start baking and beating up my batter. I sat her down and said, listen, have a plan B, join a course, take a break from my company. She took a month's course in some baking. And today, let me tell you, thanks to COVID, she is doing business out of her home. She has so many orders. Everybody seems to be having a birthday or an anniversary in their house, in our community. She is hard pressed to deliver. She can't thank me enough. She quite literally calls me up and says, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to do what I do and I, I'm, I'm passionate about. She's now asking her dad to buy her equipment and because, you know, after you start doing it at a commercial level, you, you cannot do it out of your kitchen. These are success stories at COVID times. And these are several success stories. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, uh, at least I know whom to reach for for the next birthday cake. I'm going to ask you the person. <laughs> for that, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, no, it is, it is incredible and magic happens when people are passionate about what they do. And uh, you're, you're just reflecting that. Uh, I have lots of questions from the audience. I've been so engrossed in talking to you. Uh, I have ignored the question. So I have my team WhatsApping me away and saying that sure. uh, okay. so, so here you are. Uh, this is from Sanjay Bhargav. Are there 100 crore annual revenue design firms in India? Uh, and how does it compare with the, you know, similar companies abroad? Okay. See, Alok, I'm not into the number crunching. And okay. particularly uh, during this pandemic, let me tell you, the world is never going to be the same again. Sure. It's not about very large firms with huge infrastructures or companies which are Indian companies which are comparing themselves with companies sitting abroad. That's all over. Sorry, this is bad news, but this is the news. The sooner people embrace it, the better it is. The new normal is going to be work out of your home. The new normal is going to be embracing technology and doing the kind of Zoom sessions with you and with the world and with your own teams. The new normal is going to be having very lean setups with very less number of people doing much more work. And that's the way it's going to be. Let me tell you, Sanjay, the 80-20 rule applies more than anything else today than any, any other time. For those who don't know the 80-20 rule, can I share it with them, as, uh, Alok? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. In any situation, in any business, in life in general, 20% of your customers give you 80% of the revenue. In your own company, if you have a big setup of 100, 200 architects, 500 uh, employees, 20% of your employees actually do 80% of the job. 
look at them carefully and you will know who are the star employees and you know how much they are uh, doing that in they are, you cannot do without them and 80% are just coming waiting for their month to be over and getting their salaries 20% of the clothes that you have in your wardrobe you wear 80% you don't think about this you yeah. end up wearing only the 20% shirts the rest are hanging 20% of the shoes the rest are there on the shelves that is the 80 20 rule that has come dear mr corona virus has taught us to address that situation this is all about level playing ground now for everybody it is not about numbers it's about the end result it's about being lean at, in, in terms of your setup it's about being focused on getting your 20% client and ignoring the 80% they don't matter to you focus on those 20% get them to come on the table deliver them more than they have expected give them not x that they are expecting give them x plus 1 that they are and they will never go and leave you and that's all that you want you don't want to do the whole work try to do the rest of the 80 which just exhausts you at the end of the day all you are doing is fire fighting all you are doing is chasing payments all you are doing is trying to figure out uh, uh, how to keep your employees uh, humored and going half the time life just goes interviewing uh, more and more people because the turnover is so high in bigger setups yeah. where is creativity then when do you apply the principles of design principles of marketing principles of communication they are just for the books it's not for you then you're not an architect you're a firefighter you're not a designer you're a firefighter you do a course on firefighting <laughs> i hope that answers my <laughs> sound no, it, it it reminds me of the time my kids were young and i used to tell them that dad is a firefighter because he fights fires with officers uh, <laughs> it 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 made me much more glamorous than i was and at least <laughs> so <the> well put <laughs> we are all there we all done it been there still doing it actually <laughs> Uh, okay this is this is an incredibly uh, uh, popular question how do you set prices for your services how can i am a young architect how can i set up a price for my service and how can i start commanding a price premium aajkal sabhi discount kar rahe hain you know jisne bhi ye question pucha hai na i know there is social distancing but jab usse milungi usse ek jhappi zarur dungi acha sawal pucha hai you know something the price points actually start from here from your own head if you are good and you are a designer and you are willing to spend x amount of time on a particular project and you know a certain amount of time will be applied in that project you can demand your price provided you are able to communicate to your customer what value you will bring to on the table how you will be the differentiator what is the differentiator between you as the service provider and somebody else that he might go, want to go to who may not be able to provide what you are going to provide and therefore my dear friend whoever has asked this question please apply your mind and see what value or what x factor are you bringing on the table for which you will be able to demand the price and the client let me tell you will appreciate the fact that you have been able to address his issues address his issue problems address uh, the, uh, the, the 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 his needs and bring value on the table and he will happily give you the money the problem happens is because you yourself are so worried ki main nahi karunga i lose it i will not be able to if, if i don't give him a discount somebody else will give it and take the job you are not confident about your deliverables and then you are expecting the client to become confident about you and give you the money it's a vicious circle it's yeah. a give and take it's a relationship people need to understand this relationship trust me i'm telling you people who are come from that mind frame are people who come from the uh, space of scarcity not abundance and why scarcity is because they haven't created a pipeline and when they don't have a pipeline and they don't have a basket of projects then they are scared ki ek to project ab wo bhi hath se nikal jayega 
so they bend backwards they start giving discounts they try to keep the client and news they are willing to do everything and anything simply because they are not coming from a space of abundance and abundance can be created even in these times it's how you approach the client there are projects which are still on there will be projects that will come finish there will be people who will be uh, coming out stronger in this situation doesn't matter if fikki says 35% of the msmes are going to wrap up what about the 65 be in that 65 category and be a winner why do you assume that you will be on the 35 and matho doob gaya you don't have to do bo you have to come out of it you have to be in the abundance mindset to be able to ask for the price that you deserve and that is the bottom line most designers i'm sorry to say are self employed people with no salaries that's true i hope i'm saying what i yeah yeah self employed with no salary <laughs> they are not giving salary to themselves sure. why people don't understand a simple thing like opportunity cost if they have given 10 hours in a day to a project they are not even accounting for those 10 hours when they are budgeting uh, or they are working out their cost factor they are looking at the cost of their office their employees their salary their overheads their everything else but they are not accounting for those 10 hours that they gave in that particular day uh, uh, in, uh, and plugging it into their cost and therefore their prices have gone hey by and therefore they are not succeeding it's a big uh, you know vicious circle so they end up being unemployed yeah do you keep a time sheet by any chance yes time sheets if very honestly i am myself not a very organized person with all due respect i am also a crazy mad creative uh, person who tries to be a, a bring systems uh, to my work and thanks to those systems that i try to bring in i am able to probably succeed a little more than some of my other friends who probably are uh, struggling with some of these aspects however i'll tell you one small mantra that actually helps me alo can i share it right i think it's very important to have rituals in one's life now what kind of rituals am i talking about rituals where you get up at a certain time in the morning and give it your me time no matter what your scenario is and this is not i'm talking about covid times it's about any time if you have a ritual that if you get up first thing in the morning you don't grab your mobile phone and start checking all your whatsapp and your emails that's a ritual that means you have a certain set of discipline in your life you move on to giving yourself that one hour in the morning where you take out time to learn you take take out time to study you take time out to build yourself write down i'm i'm very old school frankly i don't understand these google calendars and these young kids who do all, all of these things very quickly i'm a very paper and pen kind of a person i open my diary i write down the tasks of the day i write down what i'm supposed to do i block my time i do all the chores that i have to do i'm cooking heavily nowadays i have to I have no choice in the matter i think all of us are doing chadu pocha also some of us yeah. but let me tell you time blocking is a very very key to some a person's success particularly at times when everything is open nobody is judging you nobody is monitoring you uh, the accountability factor has to be there so unless and until you have a fixed time when you sit on your desk sort out all your issues of the day before the first zoom call happens with your team your entire day will be garbled and for that i'll tell you one small thing that is the most important thing that all of us forget ask me what is that what is that <laughs> it is self love you need to oh, fall in is. love with yourself alo you need to get up in the morning look into the mirror and say i love you the moment you say i love you you will pull out the best shirt of from your wardrobe you will wear your perfumes with or the after shave that is sitting on your table doesn't matter if it is uh, the pandemic times and you are not allowed to get out of your room because you love yourself so much you want to feel good you want to look good and when you feel good you it's a ripple effect 
when you talk to your team even when you're talking on a zoom call you talk to your client you talk to the servants that are or the uh, whoever comes to uh, in, in touch with you it just transmits around into a complete happy environment and that has to be done in a conscious manner you know i i love food i hate to exercise i have to consciously do work out it i know what is going to happen लोग कह रहे कोरोना मत फैलाओ हम अपने आप को फैलाए चले जा रहे खा खा कॉन्शियस एफर्ट बीट योगा बीट एनी काइंड ऑफ एक्सरसाइज रिलैक्स आई डोंट नो व्हाट ऑल ऑफ दिस फैंसी थिंग्स दैट वर्क समथिंग दैट वर्क्स मेडिटेशन माइंडफुलनेस समथिंग हैज टू बी डन ऑन एन एवरीडे बेसिस रिचुअल्स माय डियर फ्रेंड इज एक्चुअली द की दैट वर्क्स द बेस्ट सो दैट अगेन इज समथिंग आई वुड लव टू शेयर एंड आई होप आई हैव बीन एबल टू put a point across to my fabulous friends who are listening here yep so rituals and an attempt at time sheets uh yeah, the time sheet. why don't you tell me about the time sheet that you maintain come on alok ah that, that's incredibly tricky so i am uh, i have rituals in the morning okay. and uh, i also have a pretty much calendarized rhythm with all my direct reports they hate it uh, <laughs> but i find it works for me because then it's a calendar calendarized weekly meetings with everybody or fortnightly with some and so on but you know it just keeps a rhythm going that's a easy way uh, uh we should have a separate session for that uh, here's a question from mangala bhattacharya ji uh, is it necessary for me to have a interior designer or is it a luxury uh, she has been putting off a home renovation project for a while and uh, the thought is agar covid ke sath jeena hi hai so why not get the work done but the question basically is is a interior designer a luxury or not mangala right yes mangala lovely question let me tell you something if you're doing your home and you're somewhat creative in your you know in as a person go do it yourself don't waste money on an interior designer unless you come from that school where you think you don't understand spaces you don't have a hang of colors you don't understand uh, you know uh, textures then maybe you could go for an interior designer but if you think you want to do up your space that you're going to use more often than uh, you were using earlier work from home is the new normal i'm sure your sofa your couch your bedroom is getting far more used than it ever was you are probably seriously thinking of having a corner in your house with a desk or redoing it all up so that that becomes the work space and you have another space for you know your uh, tv time and your family time even if you have little bit of design sensibilities in yourself go for it yourself do it yourself get some of the guys to execute it guys who understand certain norms who are very high on hygiene and take precautions and there are some very good interior contractors here i hope i could tell you maybe you could you could tell her and put them on to i could give give them uh, some of those contractors they are actually abiding by all the rules and regulations that are necessary for people workers to abide by so that when they go into a space to do up the space they they do not add to the pandemic so i hope that answers your question yeah i'm i'm sure she is happy uh, and i like the way you're giving uh, advice and not really necessarily recommending an interior designer because it could <laughs> be a different approach for everybody yeah and it all depends interior designers uh, are not the most uh, cheap uh, or you know inexpensive uh, uh, breed you will have to pay for their services right and i think asians indians as a race are very design uh, you know oriented it's there in our genes so even if it's some basics that you need to uh, uh, get done or do it yourself or uh, you know go through some magazines or lean on to some uh, youtube channels which tell you and gives you some tips about how to do up your space why not yeah 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 i i, th- I think it's always easier to google search i remember the time when i was designing my home i did a lot of google search to figure out images as reference i mean that's how we do it in marketing and i was pretty much applying the marketing principles also to designing 
film. I'm that... sure you did a good job of your home. I need to check it out after the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> you should. You would be welcome anytime. Uh, here's a question from Manish Gaur. Uh, Manish Gaur, you might know him. He's from Urbain, the design workshop. Uh, Sorry, uh, with design workshop? Uh, Urban or Urban. Urban. Okay, okay, yes. right. Manish God. Okay. Uh, Darpan Katyal's partner. So, oh, right. wonderful, wonderful. Wow. Hi, Manish. So, he is saying that human beings can at times be highly irrational. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of fear psychosis now. So, how are you handling that aspect in your team now? See, human beings, Manish, are not sometimes highly irrational. They are all the time irrational. <laughs> and right, that's right. a fact. <laughs> Frankly, as designers, as an architect, you would understand we are actually doing a lot of work of, as psychiatrists, more than uh, designers. And that's true for any profession. It's not true for just designers, architects. It's true for a lawyer, for a doctor, on any person who is providing services to your client. You need to first understand and go into the mind of the client. Make the client feel comfortable. Make the client feel confident. Parallelly, you also need to make your team feel comfortable and co confident. You know, it is so true that, you know, when there is a crisis situation, the true self of a person actually comes out. All the big talk one gives when you're a boss, when all is well and you have big budgets to give big uh, Diwali bonuses. All of that goes down the tube if you don't have the same ethics that you apply when the going is bad, when there is a pandemic. That is why I salute companies like Asian Paints. They have actually upped the salaries of their employees just so that the morales of their teams are kept up. What a beautiful gesture. There's a lot to learn. Business is not just about me, myself, my comfort. It is about a larger vision. It's about touching people's lives. And what better than to be able to look after and touch your own family, your extended family, your office, your team members' lives, especially in a moment like this. So we have lots to learn. I right. hope that answers uh, Manish's question. No, sure. Thank you. Uh, I see uh, similar questions from two people, Karthik and Jessica, which is basically a uh, what is the kind of new technologies or advanced technologies that you are adopting, uh, either in design or in construction? See, every day there is some new technology that is coming up. It is so, so fluid, you know. It is so dynamic. There is so much happening that it is almost impossible to keep abreast with the latest. However, there's a very clever way of being able to keep up with the zone, keep up with this technology business. Get some very progressive millennials to come on board. As it is, you know, millennials Kazamana. Our country, 60% of India's population anyway is below 30 years of age. We have such a huge demographic dividend. And these young millennials, are bright. They understand technology. They understand it because maybe when they were born, the first thing that their parents gave them in their hand was a mobile phone. Right. We never got it. So use them to your advantage. Learn from them. Ask them what are the things that, they, that need to be used to advance your presentations, to enhance your projects, to enhance your uh, business in general. And let me tell you, they, were, they are such a bright lot. They will give you all the answers. All the millennials in my team and some of the other teams I see are the guys who are so happy working from home. They are so happy because that for them is the normal. They hate to wear clothes and, they, and get out of their homes and get into an office. They love to lounge around on bean bags with their laptops, in their t-shirts and knickers. But 
they are productive at the end of the day guys we need to create a culture of accountability not a culture of number of hours we need to get out of this babu system of saying ki kitna ghanta kaam kiya ye to ghar pe baitha ye to kuch kara hi nahi hai isme give him task to do for which he is accountable he has to deliver and then you see whether he is delivered or not then you figure out whether work of work from home is working out or not because if it is not too bad you better accept it because that is going to be the new normal yeah 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 interesting so get new millennials and they will adopt the technology and they will at least get you up to speed with it absolutely uh, uh, Rajiv Gad asks up uh, that a lot of people have a huge pressure to become successful, and as a result, uh, you know they are designing buildings or properties as per Vastu Shastra. Uh, do you see the trend catching on, and uh, why is it uh, more than what it was earlier? Vastu is something that has one of the most ancient sciences. it is not something new rajiv vastu 30 years ago when i did my first project also we applied vastu vastu is being applied today vastu will be applied even in times to come there are certain tenets of vastu which people believe in it's almost like faith sure so if people are applying vastu to be able to do projects and they are bringing value to their customers who are looking for people who understand vastu so that they are able to do their projects better and they they believe in the science of vastu where's the harm so be it that's your uh, um, value addition that you're giving to your client and if that helps you create a success story why not right there's nothing wrong in it right uh so i i can add to that rajiv we had pretty much the same discussion with architect jinyu korean about 3 uh, weeks ago and he pretty much said listen i don't believe in vastu but who am i to question my client's faith which is pretty much what lipika is saying so if the client wants it uh you learn about it you keep your opinions aside and do what is right for the client because that's what design is about absolutely uh okay now rachita has a very interesting question can you share and this looks like a phd question can you talk about some common mistakes you have seen people make and that you would strongly advise against for young architects or designers building a design practice <laughs> so uh, rachita lovely questions well i I'm, i know it, they they are much better than me and i call this crowdsourcing of questions because they normally beat me hands down Sorry, sorry. Come again. I said this is crowdsourcing of questions, and they beat my creativity hands down. You know, so they they have the they have the most interesting questions to ask. So, okay. so basically, let me answer those mistakes, right? Yeah. That a, 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 a young practice would uh, do. Yes. Yes. That While comes, making a design practice. See, first and foremost, even if you're a young practice. it's very important to from the very beginning to identify what you are passionate about and what you want to create a niche in lots of young practice just for the sake and the fear of wanting to survive end up taking all our jobs get so caught up with the day to day fire fighting that there's no time for them to flower and start looking at what they are actually good at and therefore that is one thing i need to tell young boutique practice uh, uh, you know design companies that start from the very beginning to identify your niche start building yourself as an expert don't build yourself as a generalist build yourself as a specialist point number 2 don't think you can do everything yourself it's a big mistake to think i can handle it i will design i will execute i will do this i will do that no collaborate with people who have either gone that path or are actually good at it let them handle that part of the work while you do the part that you are good at so that you can focus and you are able to bring value on the table to your customer so collaboration is the third thing is the key the second thing and the third most important build a pipeline 
you asked me a brilliant question uh, alok because ultimately at the end of the day it if you have a stream of customers in a basket a pipeline it doesn't matter if there are 10 and if 9 doesn't work out even at least one works out but you don't have a basket you don't have a pipeline there's only one customer and even that you are worried about losing out there is a no no situation yep. three big mistakes that you must definitely keep in mind and work towards it success is bound to touch your feet nice i'm, I'm sure jyoti is delighted with that uh, I, I think we are. Uh, I will take this one last question, which is uh, a very interesting question from Jyoti Suryavanshi. Uh, she thanks you for the straight talk. And Lipika, I completely agree with Jyoti on that. You have been incredibly straight and candid. And uh, okay, that's one of the reasons I love talking to you as well. What kind of processes do you have to manage projects? What standard processes? Yeah, what kind of processes? You know, what kind of processes, rituals do you do to manage the projects that are ongoing? See, first and foremost, Jyoti, the biggest thing that one needs to understand is planning. You have to plan things before even you start hammering the first nail at a site. You know, it is said that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that is something I have learned from working with companies like Daikin, the Japanese. Oh my God! More than 50% of the time goes planning. And only when the planning is complete and totally perfect to the T and it's on the table, on the computer, on everybody's desktops, will they start moving on to phase two. So plan, plan and plan and be perfect with your planning. Don't say, Cha, side chalu kar do. That's the first most key element. Then once you have your project which has taken off the ground, then it's all about setting your systems. Then you have to have people who are job responsible. Then it is all about things which are task oriented and a system which is today very much possible on the computer is a system of reporting. It's all about the great sheets and the tasks for, you know, sheets that uh, Alok was just talking about. It's all about putting things on the system which, is, which can be seen by each other and just by a simple click of a button, you know exactly where you stand. Not just about projects here, let me tell you. With your accounting, with your payment of your taxes, be it when you have to meet your next client, or what kind of presentation needs to be done, everything can be put on a system. So once you put your systems in place, let me tell you, you will by default have more time for yourself. You will have more time for you to start looking at things that you genuinely need to look at, which are more design oriented, which are more creatively oriented which are also to do with maybe some kind of public relation that is required to be done for a particular project where you need to understand the mind of the client. Because see, let me tell you, the client is no God. The client doesn't know the answers to everything. Because if he knew it, why would he have come to you at the first place? So to spend time with your customer, with the client, to get into his mind, to understand his needs, to communicate to him, the right things, bringing the client and the project in the center of the conversation and not you in the center of the conversation is very, very critical. And that is only possible when you have systems in place. Right, right. Uh, thank you so much, Lipika, for that. I'm conscious of time. It's almost 5.15 and it's not fair to keep talking to you like this because I'm sure you have other things to get back to. It's been lovely talking to you. And I, and I would actually like to paraphrase Shilpa Vora here. Uh, and I couldn't have summarized it better. Shilpa says, uh, it was fun to hear you. Very practical, very inspiring. And, uh, you know, if I wanted to summarize... Uh, I couldn't have done a better job. So thank you, Shilpa, for summarizing it so wonderfully for me. Uh, uh, lovely talking to you, Lipika. Uh, and I hope all the young architects and designers uh, 
watching this have found something that they can take away take away if you have liked it do share this conversation there's a blog that comes on the orient well website uh, you can share the blog with your peers uh, and i know lipika keeps on having webinars for uh, uh, you know helping young leaders architects thrive so connect with her on linkedin uh, and you will be surprised with the kind of work she does uh, thank you so much alok <laughs> thank you lipika a pleasure having you uh, and the team you are a fantastic audience give us a couple of weeks we will be back with something new and exciting thank you again bye bye thanks alok and thanks to the lovely audience it's been so wonderful today to share all of this with you lovely bye bye